Come, Amina. Come along, hurry. There's still no news, my king. son came into the world only after his poor suffering mother was already dead. The bolt of lightning that struck her did not so much as even graze the creature she was about to give birth to. Do you not consider what has happened a marvel, my wise friend Camus? It was already written in ages gone by, this prodigy which has occurred here. And now conduct me to your newborn son. Come with me. Leave us alone. Is what you're intending to tell my son such a terrible thing that you can't speak of it before his own mother? A secret becomes a terrible thing if too many people know its contents. Leave us, please. Very well, then. Come away now. As long as you alone know about it, King Amar, this secret will always be a terrible thing, but only for those who are your enemies and not for you. If the prophecy that I know of has come to pass now, this newborn son of yours will become the champion of all your people and will be the savior of your city. You mustn't forget that up until this day, the walls that the father of my father caused to be built around our city of Uthar have always been held in respect by the nomad peoples of the desert. Yes, they've stayed away. But they are tightening their fierce grip upon the city like the tentacles of an octopus with their continuous assaults on the caravans. In this way, one day they will suffocate Uthor by paralyzing all its commerce and trade. And when that happens, the walls will no longer be sufficient to protect us. And then my son will defeat them all at the head of his men in open battle. Is this the prophecy that is written? The prophecy speaks of a king of Uthor to whom will be born a son from the lightning. No one will defeat him or destroy him, and he will die only when his mighty strength diminishes. Your royal son was born of a lightning bolt. There is no weapon made by man that can penetrate the flesh of his body, just as no force of nature itself will be able to hurt him in any way. And you really believe that my son has this gift? I will be certain of it only after you have given me your dagger. No. You mean you'd try to? Oh, no. I must have proof of it. Why, this thing cannot be possible. It's incredible. I would call any man a liar and a fraud who told me of this miracle that I've seen with my own eyes. Many men, when they have seen your son in battle, will not believe what they have seen with their own eyes. No weapon made by man can hurt him, you said, and even none of the forces of nature. That's true. But there is one exception, though. Your son will be vulnerable to one thing and one thing alone. What is it? It is something that in the prophecies is indicated by a symbol only. The red flower. But what exactly this flower is or what significance is intended, I cannot say. My royal son, invulnerable in battle.
same one. You'll be able to find him if you look down there. Perhaps he's inside his tent. Don't you believe me, Seymour? If you want proof, you only have to draw your dagger and do as the wise Kamas did. Does that convince you? You must search for the red flower now, Seymour. You have got to discover what it is. It's only with the red flower that you'll be able to kill the child. To kill the child? And what woman on earth would ever bear an invulnerable son to me? But he is the son of your enemy. Do you think this baby will have any idea whose son he is? We are the only ones who know. You and I. Do you begin to understand me, my dear little Bentress? Yes, I understand you perfectly now. You and I are the only ones who know, and you may be sure you can count on my loyalty always. More upon your loyalty than on your intelligence, little one. And stupidity is more dangerous than disloyalty. Ventress, the stakes of this game are of such great importance for me that I can't afford the risk. <laughs> Try to catch me. Come on. What do you want here? This is my land. If it's yours, defend it. Take him! I ordered them to assault you, Kindar. I wanted to see how well my son could defend himself. Yes, Kindar. 
I am the one you've been waiting for. I remember that when you entrusted him to me, he was only a little baby, a few months old. I brought him up as if he were my own son. As you see, I maintain the promise I made. I've made a man of him. Strong and courageous. And now, farewell, Kindar. You have always known that this moment would have to come sooner or later. I've told you many times that your father was... was a great desert warrior. And that one day, he would surely come here for you. <laughs> come here. I entrust my son to you. I want you to make of him a warrior who is worthy of me. You may count on it, Samuk. Kinder. Stretched out before you lies our kingdom, the desert. <laughs> no one disputes our right to it. The caravans hasten across it, impatient to see the last of this desolation. Here the earth gives nothing to man. Whatever we need, we have no choice but to take it by force from other men. <laughs> Father. Is it true that your entire city is made of tents? <laughs> Certainly. Because in that way, our city can go with us when we are ready to move. If the well dries up, we can fold our tents and move elsewhere on the long hunt for water. Then is water so rare in the desert? It's so rare that people kill each other for it. You grew up along the banks of a great river. You don't know what the meaning of thirst is. No doubt you wanted a drink, but all you had to do was plunge your hands into the river and bring them up to your mouth. You're going to miss that, Kindar. Yes, Omar, but not for very long. What do you mean by that? You'll know soon. Ah! There, Kindar. You see that great city in the valley? Its name is Uthor. In a language that is different from ours, the word means water. Through the years, it grew up around an abundant spring. It's the only spring in the entire desert that has never been known to run dry. For this reason, they've surrounded it with walls. We who live out here have two possibilities of getting inside them, as conquerors or driven in as slaves. Those walls look solid to me. I'm certain they're well defended. In fact, none of the desert dwellers have been able to penetrate them. But what has not been accomplished in all these many years will happen very soon now, when you go into battle and we fight side by side. What makes you believe that I'm so valorous? <laughs> I know more about you. A great deal more about you than you know about your own self. But I've never handled a weapon in my life, Father. So much the better. It will be a new experience for you to learn the art of combat. Omar! My son will ride the desert with you, and Humia will teach him combat. When you both have taught him to be a warrior, the fate of Uthor will be accomplished, and it will be its downfall.
Did the man wound you, Kendar? No, I don't think so. Let me take a look at you. Why, he didn't even graze you. You were lucky this time. Right after them! Why are you killing the vanquished? It's useless. No, it's not useless. Every enemy that's killed in the desert will be one defender less who will fight on the walls of Uthor the day we are ordered to attack the city. Let's ride on. Why is it my father had me brought up away from my own people? Your father is a chief, boy, and whatever he does is inspired by the god Horus. So what he does must always be right. I'm afraid I can't tell you anymore. I asked the old women of the tribe about my mother, but none of them had known her. They say she was a woman who came from another village. And for that matter, you were not born among our tents. He never speaks of her. You shouldn't worry yourself with these troublesome thoughts. A man should think of his future before everything. And your future is a great deal clearer than your origins. You are the son and heir of the great Samut. And one day, you will take his place as our chief. Desert news flies faster than grains of sand before the wind. I want you to know I'm proud of you, Kindar. Your son has already taken on the appearance of a warrior. <laughs> Much more than the appearance, my gentle Kira. Presently, the people of Uthor will tremble at the very mention of his name. We'll return to camp. Return to camp! Yeah, my dad. 
Escort this girl as far as Ufo. No, Kendor. The girl is a prisoner. Only your father can decide what to do with her. I'll answer to him for my decision. I'm very sorry, Kendor. Your father has ordered me not only to teach you the arts of war, but also to respect the laws of the people of the desert. Take her with you to the camp, because if you don't, I will be made to answer for your action with my head. Some time now, the nomads have become more warlike and attack us incessantly. It's always been like this with us. The nomads have never given us any peace outside the walls of the city. But now their assaults are becoming more savage day by day. The caravans are no longer able to reach Uthor, Father. And in the city, we are threatened with a grave danger of Every panic. caravan is protected by an escort, son. Yes, but our escorts are massacred in these attacks. And what can we possibly do about it? Confront them openly on the field of battle? No, Zero. This is surely not the will of Horus. If he took away from me my firstborn son, who was born for that very purpose. So my brother may have been invulnerable. I am ready to die for the sake of the people of Uthor. You must live, my son, because one day you will have to reign here, with courage, of course, but also with prudence. You are the king, father, but at least you will allow me to ride out of the city to meet my cousin Nefar. Don't you think she would have sent a messenger ahead to announce her arrival? But she may have been killed by the nomads. Yes, that is quite possible. Go, my brave son. I could never forgive myself if anything should happen to harm your beloved little Nefar. Thank you, father. frightened that your tongue is paralyzed, woman of Uthor. Tell me who you are. I am Nefar. You will be only a slave from now on. Kinder, I'll make you a present. He's yours. Make this girl your slave. Well, what are you waiting for? Isn't my present to your liking? What is it? Isn't she pretty enough for you? She's much too pretty. Like good wine, the more of it you drink, the more it goes to your head. Perhaps your son is embarrassed by such great generosity on your part. Ah, that's ridiculous. Take the woman to Kindar's tent. You go along, too. <laughs> we won't be offended if you prefer the company of the beautiful princess to ours. <laughs>
My father gave you to me as my slave, but I didn't ask him. I would have preferred to have him let you go free. Don't think that because of that I'll hate you any less if you so much as touch me. A master can do whatever he likes with his slave. Even respect her if he wishes. And that's what I intend to do with you. You will pass the night in my bed. I will sleep on the ground to protect you while you rest. I will never be able to see my people again, my uncle. Who can know the thoughts of the god Horus? kill women, Ciro. They have so few, they keep them as slaves. Do you think I find consolation in that? We've got to find Nafar, and we've got to set her free. We are all with you, Ciro. You can count on us. To horse, then. Hurry! To the horses! all the others I've seen here, Kindar. That's true. And I feel a strange sensation that I can't seem to explain. But perhaps now, I understand it since you are near to me. I was lonely before I met you. Don't you find it rather strange that I am able to ease your loneliness? I who have nothing at all in common with your people? A person is lonely when he has nothing to say to himself because his spirit is closed. Perhaps it is your beauty, Nefar, that has been able to open my spirit. I beg you, don't remind me that I am your slave. I'm not speaking to you as a slave. No, perhaps not. Leave me here. But you would never have spoken a word to me if we had happened to meet at Uthor. I am the son of Samut. The chief of a tribe is the same as a king. Samut is the mortal enemy of my uncle and his people. But we two are not enemies. I... I'm not sure what my feelings are. I'm so confused, I don't know my real sentiments. You call it confusion. But I believe it has a different name. No, it can't be. I've already been promised to Ciro. He's the son of the king of Uthor. If you say you've been promised, it means it was done by others. No, it was I too. You must know, King Dar. I myself gave Prince Ciro my word. You know who it was who advised Samuel to give Nefer as a slave to Kinder. You'd better reserve all your jealousy for Samuel. Otherwise, you'll be running the grave risk of unleashing his own. Oh. <laughs> 
We'll hold the column here. This seems a suitable place. Meanwhile, you look after the men, Mohammed. What are you planning to do? Tonight, I am going to push on alone to the camp of the nomads. When I have discovered where they are holding Nefara's prisoner, then we'll all go into action at once. You must let me come with you, Ciro. No, with you along, but only double the risk. Dismount! We'll pitch camp here. what you're looking for among my tents, but one thing you're certain to find here is your death. He's the son of King Amha. Don't kill him. He's the son of King Amha. Then we'll give him a death worthy of his rank. The noble son of King Amha will be killed in a combat with the son of Samut. Place this man under guard. Tomorrow you'll see. I have an idea. I think you'll like it. Take him off the horse. Untie his hand. <coughs> you are a great hunter, aren't you? Last night you were hunting by stealth among my people's tents. But today I give you the privilege of hunting. Your game is waiting for you. There he is. Come on. If you manage to come out of this combat alive, you will be allowed to go back to your father. You have my word on that. You have the word of Samut. I will fight your son if you promise that Nefar can go away with me. <laughs> yes, Nefar can go away with you. Why, of course she can. <laughs> you couldn't ask anything of me that would give me greater pleasure. Kinder! <laughs> your opponent challenges you. <laughs> to the death! <laughs> 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 
Did you hear him? He's going to fight you for the freedom of your slave girl. He wants to take away your nephar. Begin. <laughs> Come on. I'm waiting.
prevented me from doing it. Now let him go back to the city with Nefar. He has your word. You're a fool. I know I owe you my life, but I won't be able to be so generous with you if Horus ever gives me the opportunity of killing you. Is your hatred so great? It's not hatred. I only fear you because you are too dangerous a threat to Uthar. Over there beyond those dunes stands Uthar. the son of Samut had killed me. I don't know what to do with my life from now on. Will you tell me what is the use of going on living if it is just to see the destruction of Uthor? Because that is certain to be the end of this struggle, Father, if we continue to plot and scheme behind the shelter of our Be walls. silent. That will do, Ciro. Come back to your senses, my son, or I'll be forced to believe that a thirst for vengeance has blinded you. What you ask of me is madness and nothing else. To attack the camp of the desert nomads, when you yourself recognize that the valor of Kindar has made their tribe one of the best and strongest of all. Yes, noble father. Attack them and attempt to wipe them out before it's too late to do it. Before our soldiers have been convinced that he is invulnerable and take to flight at the mention of the name of Kindar. No, Ciro. We're not going to attack them. Our city is absolutely safe. Between us and the nomads are our great walls. And not even the strong and valorous son of Samoth will ever be able to breach them or break down the mighty gate. you know why I had that huge gate built here in the desert, identical to the one at Uthor? Yes, Father. I believe I could break open the gate of Uthor as I have done with this one, if only the men on the walls will give me time. What do you mean by that? All the city's defenders will be on the walls and aim at me with their weapons. They'll hurl stones and lances down on me and boiling oil. <laughs> yes, certainly, you're right, my son. Boulders and boiling oil, lances, and what other things? Oh, yes, arrows. Arrows as well. A huge cloud of arrows will rain upon you from the walls of Uthor. <laughs> Archer, come forward. And now set your arrows to your bows. Down. No. 
Now shoot at him! Shoot at him! Did you hear me? I said shoot at him! Obey my order or I'll have your heads cut off! Shoot those arrows! <laughs> Now you see why I knew you would be our great champion in the victory over Ufor. Of course they'll throw big stones down on you, and boiling oil too, and shoot arrows. But nothing will prevent you from breaking open the gate because you are invulnerable, Kindar. Do you understand? There is no deadly weapon in the whole world that has the power to kill him or even wound him. And when he alone has broken the gate open, we will follow him and burst into the city. The street will run red with the blood of its people, and the air will resound to the echo with our victorious war cries and the groans and prayers of the vanquished dying. No one in that city must escape the slaughter. Our nomad warriors will strike down every living being without mercy. They will have orders not to spare the women and not even the children. Because this is the great law that has governed the world through the ages. It is my life in exchange for your death. And this alone is the great law that rules us. It won't be the life of the vanquished that'll bring death to us because we are much stronger than they are. The vanquished of today will be the rebels of tomorrow. Remember, it has always happened when the victors have been foolish enough to allow the children of the vanquished to grow to manhood and to allow their women to give birth to still other children. But this is not going to happen in Uthor, Kindar. No, father. And now listen to me. This is my plan. You will leave for Uthor at once. Humya and his warriors will ride with you as your escort. You will take the ram with you right up to the walls of the city. And in the hours of darkness, you will place the machine in position exactly in front of the portal. Then Humia and his men will draw back out of range of the archers. And at dawn, their surprise will be a bitter one. The defenders of Uthor will awaken to their last day. If they make a sortie in an attempt to demolish our battering ram, you will drive them back into the city. We will arrive at daybreak. And when all our men are drawn up in battle array, you, Kindar, will break open the city gate. <laughs> I can see your father's orders have upset you. His decision to kill everyone in the city. It's true, Kira. Useless slaughter is repulsive to me. No. It's for her. I know. But not even you will be able to save her. She will certainly die, too, like all the other people of Uthor. And does this please you, Kira? No. Whatever is displeasing to you is unpleasant for me as well. It's true that I hate that woman, but I don't wish for her death. What I wish most of all is that she had never existed. Do you want to save her, Kindar? Save her then, but give her up. She's a woman of Uthor. She's not for you. But how can I save her? If you don't break open the portal, they will never get inside. Should I disobey my father's order? Let's go away together, Kindar. Let's both leave the people of the desert forever. I'll gladly become your slave girl, and I'll be gentler and more passionate than ever. I know how to. No, Kira. You shouldn't say these things to me, nor to anyone else. You belong to Seymour. And you to Nefa. for this moment for 20 long years, my son. I depend on you. You haven't waited in vain. I won't disappoint you, Bo.
Nathar, I didn't mean to frighten you. No, not at all. You didn't frighten me in the least, Cyril. I was just lost in my thoughts. What is it that you're worried about, Nathar? Tell me, wouldn't you care to confide in me? But I have nothing to tell you, Cyril. Oh, Nefa, you don't want to speak, but your silence has more than any number of words. Why do you stay in the garden alone? Without your courage, I would never have been able to come back here to this peace and this wonderful tranquility. Oh, but my courage would not have been enough to accomplish it. You know that both of us owe our freedom to the son of Semut, and I owe him my life, too. Ciro, you asked me to tell you what my worries are. Wouldn't it be better for you to tell me? What it is that disturbs you? The nomad warriors carry off the women of Uthor so they can keep them as their slave girls. Yes, it's true. Seymour gave me as a slave to his son. But he didn't outrage me as was his right. Perhaps it would have been better if he had done it, because in that case you would hate him too. Isn't it so, Nefar? Yes. It is so. You've got to forget about him. There is an abyss that can never be filled between the two of you. Kindar is the worst of all our enemies because he is the strongest and the most valorous. You are a woman of Uthor, and at some future day you will become queen of Uthor because you will be married to me then. Isn't that true, Nefar? I still have your promise, don't I? Yes, Cyril. Yes. And now we'll have the men push the ram into position before the gate, so it'll be ready for tomorrow. Very well, Hunye. Kinda, you must be very careful of what you do. Your father is depending on surprising them. You can count on me. I'll be back before dawn. Don't worry.
me alone. Go, all of you. Tinder! Whatever made you come here? Why did you run such a risk? If you should be captured, it can only mean death for you. Death is threatening you. I beg you, Nefer, come with me. Tomorrow morning, my father will attack Uthor. I will enter the city. No one here is going to escape the slaughter. If you say this is to be the fate of my people, Kindar, it will be mine too. Sweet Nefer, I won't make you live with my people since you hate them so. I'll take you with me to another country. There you'll have a peaceful life, and you'll forget all this. And what of my memories, Kindar? No, there can be no joy when one's heart is so full of sorrow. You say that your desert warriors will slaughter my brothers, but you will be with the warriors, helping them strike down my brothers. I am the son of Samut. I must obey his orders, even if I don't approve of the fierceness with which he fights. Nefar, even though in my heart I would like to save your people, I cannot betray the confidence of my own. It is your destiny to conquer our city, just as it is our fate to know we must die. It is your resignation that condemns you, not fate. If Cyril were king instead of your uncle, we wouldn't be so certain of victory. No, Kindar. The king is not a coward. He is simply a man who has been marked by destiny. Only a few of us know of the terrible thing that happened years ago, before Cyril was even born. The king's firstborn was stolen from his cradle. That son would have grown up to be the champion of Uthor, and he would have liberated our people forever, from you and from the threat that is hanging over us. Because the gods granted him a gift no one else has ever had, they made him invulnerable. Invulnerable? I know, it's difficult to believe, but I'm not telling you of a legend. The king's little son really was invulnerable. A counselor, right before the eyes of Emma, tried to stab the child and couldn't do it. Kidnapped? Many years ago? How many years? About 20 years, so they say. 20? And no one has ever heard of him? No, nothing. Kinder! I want to speak with the king! You're insane! Don't you realize the gods will kill you? Kinder! You haven't the slightest chance of escaping from here, Kinder. Give yourself up. Very well, Cyril. I wish to speak to the king. You will speak with Emha, and also with Horus. Are you quite certain that he's really the son of Samuel? Quite certain. You surely cannot be ignorant of the fact that there is a law that concerns you nomads of the desert here in Uthor. If any one of you comes into the city carrying arms, he is put to death immediately. This is not mere cruelty on our part, it's our defense. We are trying to inspire fear with this threat of terrible punishment to be inflicted to keep you at a distance from us. You came here armed, Kindar. You will die in the frightful embrace of the Bride of Horus. Father, you know I owe my life to Kindar. I implore you to grant him his own. You of all people ask me this, Ciro. You yourself have told me often that he is the most terrible of all our enemies. Me, the same thing, remember? If the god Horus had given you the opportunity to kill me, you would have forgotten all about your debt. What I meant by that was if I had met you on the field of battle. But now that he is our prisoner, unarmed and in chains, he is no longer dangerous. Let him die at once. Put him to death. Shut him up within the Bride of Horus. Kinder! Kinder! 
Kinder, Kinder, Kinder. Open it now. Look at that. Look there, Nepal. No. Look there. Kindar is still living. Look there. What? He's alive. Kindar! I'm invulnerable, Nepal. You. You just like the son of Imha. He's invulnerable. Kindar, 20 years ago, my baby firstborn son was abducted. And he too had the same stupendous gift the gods have granted to you. And you appear to be the same age that he would be right now. Could it be possible that great god Horus has given both to me and to my enemy Samoth sons who are both invulnerable? My birth has always been a mystery to me. But now, I understand everything. You? You are my firstborn son? Yes, father. No. What are you doing?
Now it's up to you, Kinder. Did you hear me? You are to break down the portal. Do it at once. you do that? What is the meaning of what you've done? Your deception is at an end, Seymour. Now I know all. You know? What do you think you know, you madman? I know everything, Seymour. I also know the things you kept secret. And I know why you were so careful to keep me hidden for so many long years far away from the desert. I know that you armed me to fight against my people. You even tried to make me shed the blood of my own brother. And you wanted me to carry out the most degrading task a man could have, that of destroying my city. You say I must open the gate of Uthor. I'll do it, but without having to break it down. Open the gate! Open the gate! May Hora strike him. Withdraw! Fall back! Fall back! with a camel. Follow me, men, to the attack! Kindar last night. He went inside the city. You shouldn't have let him go.
the order to retreat. Get on with it. For years and years, my single dream has been of one thing get inside the city of Uthor. And I've been cheated out of it, betrayed and cheated out of it, at the very moment I was about to conquer it. Kira, that fire there, doesn't it seem like a red flower? Seamus. No, my mind is not wandering. Kindar is invulnerable, yes, to everything except the red flower. The lightning killed his mother at the moment she brought him into the world. And the lightning is the fire of the god Horus. With his fire, Horus made him invulnerable. And at the same time, he gave the fire the power to destroy his life. Yes, I'm sure it's true. The red flower is bound to be the flame. The fire!
May the high holy gods bless the name of Kindar. It is thanks to him the gate is finally wide open from dawn till sunset uh, every living day. Certainly. And now our merchants can take up their trading as in the old days. May Horus protect yes, him indeed. forever, yes, yes. Kindar! Please listen to what I have to tell you. Between the two of us, Nefar, there's nothing more to say now. Cyril has released me from my promise. Cyril has done that? Yes, Kinda. You shouldn't have asked him to do it. But there was no need for me to ask him. Cyril read the desire deep in my heart and released me from my pledge before I could express it to him in words. I know how much this has hurt him, and the bitterness he must feel is my fault. You know very well that the love I felt for your brother had already faded when I was still trying to smother the love that is in my heart for you. You know we should both try to do that. And if we should renounce our own happiness, what happiness would we give to him by that? I only love you, Kindar, and you may drive me away if you wish. But I can do nothing but go on loving you forever. My dear sweet Nefar, don't think I have stopped loving you for a single instant, even if during these past days I've avoided you continually. For me, these days have been interminable. And so terribly sad and lonely. I know, for me too. plan is very simple. Someone is going to bring her here. You will have nothing to do but wait. Nefer will never come to a miserable place like this. My daughter is one of her handmaidens. Leave it to her to arrange it. And now the payment? After. Before. caravan came to the city this morning, bringing a great quantity of materials from Syria. Woolens, light as a feather, silks and linen and rich velvets. Shall we go to see them? Yes, I'd love to. Don't go away, ladies. I haven't shown you the most beautiful things yet. Ladies, come back and take another look at these lovely fabrics. You'll never find silks as beautiful and pure as these. I have never seen you appear as happy as you do today, Nefar. Yes, you're right. I really enjoy all this gay confusion and the possibility of admiring so many wonderful things. Is the place very much further? No, it's here. You see, it's here. But this is not a shop, is it? No, it's the house where the merchant lives. It's a trap and nothing else. Do not go. 
Do not go, I beg you, my son. I forbid you to run this risk. It's very obvious that Seymour has set a trap in order to capture you. Perhaps he has discovered the significance of the red flower and intends to use it to kill you. Yes, that's true. The red flower. You surely remember what I told you. There is one thing only that can bring about your death. It is a thing that is hidden beneath that symbol, which in all these years we have never been able to interpret. Father, I only know that Seymour would kill Nefar. He's threatened to do it if I don't go. I have no other choice. I'm coming with you. No. Seymour said I must go there alone. Wait, Kindar, Kindar! Well, this time, Father, I shall not obey you. I shall follow him with my cavalry. You will not have to be disobedient because it is I who order you to go after him, Ciro. Seamus. He's inside. Kinda! Go away. If you stay here, you'll die. Where's Nefar? The flame of the fire is the red flower. Do you know what that means? The fire will kill you just as it would any other. Where have they taken Nefar? No one knows that I am here. Where is Nefar? Come with me, Kinda. I know a way out. Hurry before the flames have blocked it off. I beg you, let's escape. Tell me where Nefar is. You can't possibly save her. All you can do is die with her. Kira, I beg you, where is Nefar? She's in there. There. Thank you, Kira. Ah! Kira! Kira. Hurry. Save Neva. I've come to save you. Everything's all right now.
from hell! This time the fire will kill you! Now die! This will be the end of you! Can't you make it? <laughs> Kinder! Kinder, be careful! Kinder, the crocodile! Kinder, what are you doing? Nefar! Don't do that again. I can't stand it. It frightens me. It frightens me. If that crocodile had been fast enough to catch up with me even a single time, I would have discovered long before that I was invulnerable. This is where you are content, Kinder. Yes, Nephi. Ciro is much more suited than I am to ruling and giving happiness to his people. And you will give it to me. 